My name is Shadana Dickerson Sultan, and I am Oglala Lakota. Uh, my family is from Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. The, the Rocky Mountain Indian Chamber of Commerce has been around for over two decades, um, and it initially started out as you know a place for Native American business owners to get together in the Denver market um, to be able to pull their resources together, to network, to grow, um, to help each other, and addition eventually ended up growing beyond just Denver. Um, you know, as you know, here in Colorado, huge uh, urban native population um, in this area. And of course, with the military bases being down in Colorado Springs, Fort Carson, and, um, you know, uh, uh, Shriver Air Force Base being down there, you do have a large constituencies of uh, Native Americans serving in armed forces. So um, we obviously got a big uh, uh, population there as well that wanted to get involved into the chamber. Um, so it kind of spread to to that area and then you think about the Utes in the southern part of the state so Ute Mountain Utes and the southern Utes um, are the actual tribes of Colorado the large tribes um, and so you know obviously outreach to those tribes as well so it started to grow past just the Denver area into the entire state of Colorado and then we started growing some legs um, in, in contacts within the surrounding area so we do have people you know that participate and get involved from you know Wyoming people from New Mexico as well and so now it's the Rocky Mountain Indian Chamber of Commerce so it serves this entire area. You've got a lot of um you got some big organizations like the Native American Rights Fund, um, which is here in, in Colorado. They're actually up in Boulder. Um, that is the legal entity uh, that, that works on treaty enforcement uh, with the United States. So you've got that, you know, hubs here. They have offices, uh, a couple of offices, but they are headquartered here in Colorado. You've got organizations like the American Indian College Fund um, that's also headquartered here, um, which is huge as far as education goes within Native countries. Um, and I guess you can say that's kind of the, the education hub uh, for assistance, um, uh, financial assistance uh, for Native Americans is housed here. Um, and then you've got, you know, Denver March Pow Wow, which is the largest Native American-run Pow Wow in the world. Um, you know, there are several Pow Wows that um, are, are, are large, um, but this is uh, run completely uh, by, by all Natives, which is pretty awesome. Um, so those are some of the, the big, you know, um, ear marks that kind of list Denver. Um, historically, so you've got, uh, we, we talk about relocation programs, and of course everyone knows, you know, that historically years past, um, Native communities were moved from, you know, natu their natural homes into reservations. Um, and then at, at some point in time, the government considered um, how can they get those particular communities acclimated and integrated into metropolis areas. So they created a relocation program that essentially was a work education relocation program that was supposed to take people from the reservations into urban areas and offer job training, education, job placement, housing. Um, and so Denver was one of those hub areas. Um, and you will see quite a few families um, just over time that may have gone to the East Coast or gone out to California that kind of made their way back to Denver because we're so centrally located. It's a quick five hour zip up to you know, Lakota country, um, going into Montana, that's another five hours in the other direction, going down to New Mexico, another five hours in the other direction. So it still offers the benefits of living in an urban population and a metro um, population where you can, um, you know, pursue those professional careers that you want in those urban populations, but you can still drive home in a matter of hours. So I think Denver has kind of been that um, oasis, if you will, uh, for natives that still want to have connection to their homes and their families on reservations, but be able to um, work in an urban area. It's just absolutely beautiful and inspiring to see um, how different yet how alike we are as natives. Um, I think it's there's a tendency with people who aren't necessarily um, in the native culture every day to, to forget and say, well, I don't really see Native Americans. Um, but you do, you probably just think that they're part of another cultural demographic, um, oftentimes mistake, mistaken to be in other demographics because we're multilingual. Um, a lot of us are multilingual. Um, uh, and, and 
that's certainly something, again, to see uh, how many different areas and, um, you know, different industries we work in and how successful um, and savvy our people are. And that really is something, uh, you know, at the core of it, what the purpose of the Rocky Mountain Indian Chamber is, is to help the Native community to be relevant um, and current um, in business, but as well to maintain the respect for our cultures and traditions. Um, and that is certainly something that we truly promote um, and, and helping keeping that tradition alive as well. Um, in the business world, you know, it's certainly difficult and that that's one of the things that we have to remind, you know, some of our native entrepreneurs, um, some of the things that are very traditional for us, like humility and, and being humble um, and modest, don't necessarily translate well all the time within corporate America. Um, so we do have to kind of push and say, hey, you know, there's nothing wrong with making money if you really want to be successful and you want to grow your business. Um, you kind of have to brag on yourself a little bit and, and tote some of your successes. Um, and those are some of the things that, that we, you know, do remind them that we are respectful of our traditions and cultures, but how can we acclimate, you know, some of the, what these businesses are doing to make them pertinent to today's global market and help them be successful. Um, and we'll also, you know, as well promote, you know, traditional things like our Denver March powwow. We partner with those types of institutions and organizations so that we can help keep those essential traditional elements like dance um, alive in our culture. Um, so we'll bring in some of our corporate partners that are able to help support some of those particular nonprofit organizations to keep that tradition alive. Um, and those are some of the things that we are absolutely, you know, move toward and, and make some of our ultimate goals at the chamber. So powwows, are, they range, and it really dif it differs if you're going to a small powwow that's kind of in a rural setting um, versus an urban powwow. <laughs> uh, but essentially, at the end of the day, um, it really is to highlight the, the significance of dance within our our culture. Um, you know, and each dance has a meaning behind it. Um, and, and we'll talk specifically with, with jingle dance, that is traditionally a dance that's used for healing. Um, and, and the story behind it is, you know, this is a dance that's used to um, heal people. Um, and, and that is, as the women dance, it makes this music. Um, and if you look at a traditional, uh, you know, a jingle dance, um, it's a dress that has, you know, traditionally 365 uh, little metal uh, jingles on the dress and if you follow the traditional way of making that dress you sew one of those jingles on every day of the year and so at the culmination of a year you have a dress that um, kind of signifies your past year and what you've gone through um, and then as you're dancing with this the the bells on the dress um, make music and um, it brings a healing wind of change um, which is absolutely beautiful and that's essentially how I started jingle dancing uh, was to heal from an illness um, uh, at one point in time I had a flesh eating disease in my leg and was very close to having it amputated um, and actually thought I was you know at the end of the road um, but my family encouraged me to get into jingle dancing and I walked with a walker for uh, a little bit and a cane um, but through dancing um, was able to help heal myself emotionally spiritually physically um, and and that, those are the types of things that we like to keep alive uh, within our, our tradition and our, our culture you know, our goals are to reach out first to uh, Native American entrepreneurs and provide them resources so that their businesses can grow and be successful um, with hopes that as they become successful, those resources are going to trickle back into our communities to help improve our communities. We also look at Native professionals, helping them network. Um, so we're, we are looking at the architects, the physicians, the attorneys, the advertising uh, professionals that are out there and helping them get connected uh, within their specific industries. Uh, we also look at students, so we're helping Native American students get into that professional pipeline. Uh, we provide scholarship money every year for students to continue in that path of education, again with the hopes that as they all become successful, those resources trickle back into our communities. We also focus on Native American tribes um, and helping them with their economic development and enterprises, and then we help our corporate partners. So those are the big, you know, corporate giants that have a specific message for the Native community, um, and a lot of times, you know, 
know, when you're talking to this particular demographic, it's not like you can buy a commercial and say, okay, check, we've talked to this community because um, this is a very niche community. And so we are somewhat of a conduit of helping them get that message back effectively to the community. So we partner with people like the American Diabetes Association. Um, and this year, our social campaign is Diabetes Awareness. So we're assisting the American Diabetes Association in getting that messaging back to the Native community effectively. One of the things that we're working on is providing, um, I guess, grants or a scholarship of sort to a small business owner. And so we'll look at someone who might be a jewelry maker or someone who does beadwork, and we'll um, look at, you know, an award of about two to five thousand dollars, and say, you know, this could help them pur purchase the textiles that can jumpstart that business or help them revamp, you know, their website so that they can be on that global market and accommodate shipments abroad. Um, so sometimes it does become financial. We will steer them in the direction of grants um, and what's available out there. Um, also, we help them with certification. So we have a number of members who are construction companies, business service companies that handle payroll, HR, um, and if they need to get 8A certified, um, if they need to become minority business certified, we help them along that process to make sure they're getting the proper certification um, and connect them with the right contacts so that they can bid out for those contracts. So it, it crosses a number of lines, financial, resourcing as far as certification, and then as well networking for opportunities. So we look at things like, um, and we actually initially came in um, and started working on this when we were talking with uh, First Nations uh, Economic Development. Um, and one of the things that they mentioned were, you know, people like Navajo beef, um, Oneida salmon, or Oglala bison. Um, these are tribes that actually have products that need to go to that global market. Um, we were, we're working, and that's part of that program with Natives Go Global, and helping them get connected to the right contacts so that we can help facilitate that trade and commerce. Um, I absolutely love what I do. Um, it, it's funny because, you know, you, you, you put in, um, when you really love what you do, you don't, you don't realize all of the work that goes into, um, and it's not until, you know, someone turns and says, wow, you know, you, how big is your team? And you just, you say, well, it's, it's me and a couple volunteers, <laughs> that's it. But we're able to pull off some really cool stuff um, with just the small numbers that we have. Um, and that's really, um, I, I think, the biggest thing is just the, the passion and the drive and to see the real difference that I'm making with our community to see these students, you know, we fundraise all year long for scholarship money to help students. And to be able to see these students go on, um, you know, now, and I volunteered with the Rocky Mountain Indian Chamber for three years before coming to work with them. And to now see some of the students that I remember three years ago that were getting, you know, scholarship assistance that are now, um, they're doctors and they're doing medical research um, to help our people. Some of them, you know, work in economic development and they're finishing their PhDs. Um, to see some of them that are going into JD programs, to see, you know, them take those different paths. That to me is probably the most rewarding part of it. Um, the biggest change is every single day I'm smiling. And it's funny because children are oftentimes, they don't have a censorship and they are the honest voice that you need to hear. And um, I can tell you my daughter just you know she sees it and she goes mom you're so happy and I said I am I'm just fulfilled absolutely fulfilled with the work that I get to do and am very fortunate to have this particular opportunity right now to serve our community and our people and really make a difference thank you thank you